Welcome to Parsec. So, you've decided to get a shiny new Parsec for Teams license. You're all set to work and collaborate from anywhere on your own terms. But you've opened the Parsec app and you have no idea what you're looking at. What's that little button doing up there? Well, look no further. In this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know about using the Parsec app, some of Parsec's coolest features, and how you can optimize Parsec to suit you and your workflow requirements. We cover the admin panel in a separate video, so if you need to learn about managing your Parsec for Teams account, check out the link in the description. First things first, open the Parsec app and log in to your account. Once logged in, you'll find yourself presented with the computer's screen. This screen is the main hub for connecting to all of your available computers, including those you've logged into or that your team's made available. If you're logged into your computer at the office and opening Parsec at home, you'll see your office computer listed here along with any others also signed in or assigned to you. Let's log in to our PC in the office by clicking Connect. Notice how we've landed on the login screen. This is because Parsec includes a feature to allow it to run pre-login. This means that if your machine contains sensitive info and you want to authenticate, or that it's a machine with multiple users, you can enable Parsec to boot to this screen and require a login first. That keeps everything safe and secure. If you don't have Parsec installed that way, you'll just connect to whatever screen is active. Now you're logged in. The first thing you'll probably notice is the Parsec Overlay button. This little guy gives you power over the majority of Parsec settings and features. Let's take a look at some of the controls we have. Perhaps this amount of control is too much power for you, and you'd rather just focus on your work. As you may have guessed, the Hide button option removes this Parsec Overlay button and any temptation it may bring, so that you can focus on the task at hand. If you're in a shared session, you may want to chat and give feedback with other users who are also connected to the computer. You can bring up the chat window using the chat option here, or at any time pressing Control-Shift-C on your keyboard, Command-Shift-C on Mac. With the chat window open, you can see and send messages to everyone else watching. The windowed and full screen option gives you the ability to toggle Parsec between a windowed or full screen view. Full screen's a more immersive experience that really makes it feel like you're sitting in front of the host computer, while windowed will simply put the stream aside other active windows on your computer. Additionally, the sound setting allows you to toggle sound from the stream on or off, allowing you to easily switch between your current project's audio or those sweet lo-fi tunes you're currently listening to at home. Next up, Codex. By default, Parsec uses the H.265 codec. This is our recommended codec to use if both machines support it, as it'll deliver a much better image for high-resolution displays than at the same bitrate of its H.264 counterpart. If you select H.265 and your computer can't handle it, it'll automatically switch to H.264, so it's best to just keep H.265 as your preferred setting. The next setting allows you to choose the decoder that Parsec uses. By default, Parsec will attempt to use hardware decoding, as this should provide a faster and more reliable experience. However, you can switch it to software at any time should you have any issues. Then we get on to one of Parsec's coolest features, exclusive to the paid versions, Parsec for Teams, or Parsec Warp, the ability to view your work in the 444 color mode. 420 is the standard for most online video formats. However, if you're editing high-resolution video or need that extra color information while working, selecting this option will switch Parsec to using 444 color in real time and will also switch Parsec over to software decoding. This is because Parsec currently needs to handle the decoding itself for 444 color to work properly. It's worth noting that currently AMD and Intel GPUs do not support 444 color, so your host machine must be using an NVIDIA GTX 900 GPU or better for this to work. We recommend users toggle this option based on their current workflow. If you're currently doing some work that's color critical, such as grading footage, editing code in an editor, or editing a texture for your game, then enable this option. Once your color critical tasks are completed and you're returning to basic editing or any other task relying on motion like animation or video playback, we recommend disabling 444 color for improved performance. 
Another cool feature in Parsec for Teams is the ability to view, work with, and customize multiple screens. If your host machine has multiple monitors available, you can choose the second screen option in the Parsec overlay panel. This will open your host's second monitor in another window, meaning that if your client machine only has one monitor, you can still access both of its screens. And of course, if you have multiple monitors connected at home too, you can use the full screen option to host each window on its own monitor, like you're right there in the office. If your host machine doesn't have multiple displays available, but you'd like to simulate some, you can do so using the virtual displays setting in the Parsec app. This setting requires you to download our virtual displays driver by clicking this link. Once downloaded and installed, these two options should then be available in the settings menu. You can enable up to two virtual displays on a host machine. The privacy setting here requires virtual displays and allows Parsec to disable physical displays on the host machine when a client is connected to it. It will also lock the computer once the last client has disconnected forcing any new user connections to log back in to the host machine. This can be extremely useful if you're at home connecting to a machine in your office, and you don't want colleagues in the studio or other members of staff seeing what you're working on. Back to the overlay menu. One of the most powerful features of Parsec when it comes to dual monitors is the ability to customize and control different settings for each monitor. For instance, if you're working with a second monitor that's slightly better than the one in your office, you can change the resolution of it to fit your monitor at home. Similarly, if you're not touching the second monitor often, you may want to reduce the bandwidth to something more suitable. This feature really helps you optimize your Parsec streams for whatever you're working on at any given time, especially if you're in a bandwidth-constrained environment but still want the power of dual displays. Next up, let's talk about bandwidth. When you're working with a single client host, the bandwidth setting will control the maximum bandwidth that the host machine will ever stream to the client. Parsec is designed to be incredibly bandwidth efficient, especially when the screen is static. Parsec will use whatever bandwidth it needs to compensate for that motion up to the bandwidth limit you set as your maximum here. When you have multiple clients connected to a single host, your bandwidth setting is going to be shared by however many connected clients there are. So if, for example, our maximum bandwidth is set to 50 megabits, and we have five clients connected simultaneously, each of those clients will receive a 10 megabit stream. In some cases, you may want to customize Parsec's bandwidth settings even further. For instance, if you're using Parsec for virtual conferencing for your game studio and reviewing a level in your game with 10 or 20 members of your team, you may need to increase the maximum bandwidth much higher than 50 megabits to accommodate for the larger number of client machines. This can be achieved via Parsec's config file in Windows. By default, Parsec runs at a variable frame rate, which allows it to be incredibly efficient when the screen is static or there's little motion. But this can sometimes cause artifacts with text or other fine details on the screen, especially when the screen is static. If you require a consistently clear image at all times, you can tell Parsec to run at a constant 60 FPS at all times using the constant FPS toggle in the overlay. We do not recommend enabling this when you're gaming or doing anything that requires lots of motion, as it may significantly increase latency. But for programming purposes or graphics use cases where the screen is mostly static and you require a clearer image and the fine details, enabling this option alongside the 444 color setting will give you the best possible output quality. Finally, it's worth pointing out that when the overlay is open, you'll also see the session statistics at the top of the screen. The session statistics show everything you need to know about the performance and connection quality of Parsec, and should help you if you need to diagnose any potential issues. The decode latency is how long it's taking your machine to decode the video that it's receiving. The encode latency is how long it's taking your host machine's GPU to encode the video. The network latency is how long it's taking both machines to communicate with one another. To achieve the best network latency results, we recommend that both machines are connected to their network via cable ethernet rather than a wireless adapter. If you're seeing high network latency and one or both machines are using Wi-Fi to connect to the network, 
try connecting them to your network via a wired connection instead. The next item shows information about the codec Parsec is using and video format. The hardware label is displayed if Parsec is using your machine's GPU to handle the video stream. Otherwise, another label will be displayed to tell you that Parsec is handling the decoding itself. Lastly, the final label here shows the current chroma subsampling color space that Parsec is using. Let's take a look at the Parsec app settings on our host machine here. We can be connected to the machine and change its settings if we want. We can restart Parsec on our host machine by right-clicking on the Parsec app and choosing Restart. This will close the stream, and Parsec will restart itself on the host ready to reconnect. Additionally, we can also restart the host computer through an active Parsec session should we need to. And if it's a machine-level user, it'll be available for connection once the computer restarts. We can enable machine-level user access in the host settings menu of the Parsec app. Scroll down to the machine level user entry and click enable. For system admins watching, this process can also be automated through a PowerShell script. And that's pretty much the basics of getting started with Parsec. To get back to your own machine, simply click the disconnect button in the overlay to log out and disconnect from the stream and you'll be returned to the computer's screen in the Parsec app. As you can see, it's easy to get started and optimize your experience with Parsec. We've designed many features to help you and your team get the most out of working, wherever you are. For more information on Parsec and using the Parsec app, follow the link below. Thanks for watching.